Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be working on some intermediate to advanced level CSS slash SAS stuff. And we're gonna do this uh, by trying to recreate part of an actual synthesizer. Um, so this is kind of called like drawing in CSS or CSS drawing, whatever. Um, this is kind of based on this rolling uh, rhythm performer thing. It's kind of the bottom portion down here. Um, and obviously it would take a long time to do this whole thing, trust me. Um, but this is, you know, what we're gonna work with. And it doesn't look that impressive, but there's quite a bit of stuff happening here. But if you look at the HTML, um, there's really not that much happening here. But if you look at the CSS or the SAS, there is quite a few interesting things occurring here. So I'm going to be explaining all of that. And this uh, video is uh, um, inspired by this article that I read today. Um, this person, this is a code pen, um, did a synthesizer, synthesizer, that's how you say it, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> entirely in HTML and CSS. So very cool stuff, and we'll be able to learn a lot uh, by you know just simply trying to draw in CSS, and it really can translate itself to other areas that might be useful in the future. All right, so if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe, and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm in Visual Studio Code in an empty folder. I created an index.html. We're gonna hit exclamation, exclamation point enter. We're gonna put link here, CSS main.css file. Um, let's create that, so the CSS folder. Main.sass, we will definitely want to use for this project. New, it says watch SAS. This is the live SAS compiler extension you will need in the plugin section um, over here. And then also um, right click open with live server. You'll need the live server extension as well. And we can see we have our blank document. Awesome. All right. So we can see uh, the only part I want to really tackle a part of this is just these lines and then these buttons right here. All right. So let's get started with our HTML. The HTML is actually very simple. Um, and so what we'll do here first is create a, a class of wrapper and then also a button container. All right, and so the overall wrapper, my plan for this is just to give it um, some white space on the outside of it. Um, and then the button container right here is just gonna have all the buttons. Um, so we're just gonna put um, class button and then replicate this a bunch of times until you get to about 14 or so. I think technically there's 16 of them, but just to save space, I just chose 14. So you want 14 of these. There's an Emmet uh, way of replicating lines and I forget what it is, but uh, no big deal. Um, and that's it. So you're, you might be wondering how will we achieve you know these lines here. I'm not gonna bother with the, these little cutout notches, but we will make the lines here um, and we don't need to have any HTML markup necessarily specifically for those. All right, because there's a cool way of doing it. Okay, so at this point, if we look at the result, um, what do we have? We have nothing. <laughs> There's just empty classes of divs. Okay, so um, what we wanna do now is just get some basic uh, CSS out of the way. So I'm always adding up here, asterisk, asterisk before, and asterisk after. That means basically every single element we wanna apply box sizing, border box. All right, so the reason we do that is because say for instance, we uh, have padding or margin that's applied to an element that has like 100% width or whatever, um, then this stops the problem where it uh, has an incorrect width, which usually creates like horizontal scroll bars and stuff. So that stops that issue. Um, we're gonna have, let's work on a body real quick. So our body will be height, 100 viewport height. We need to set that by default just to get everything centered up. Um, and then margin zero, we're also gonna have a display grid. Remember, the body element only has one direct child element, which is the wrapper. Get out of there. And we want to then place content center. I'm always using this. This places that element, that child on that single child element vertically and horizontally centering it. Um, and then background, we're gonna use a pretty dark color, so RGB, uh, what am I doing? RGB, 34, 34, 34. You can see the uh, what, where it is right down there. And then we're gonna do color white, and then font family, 
You know what I'm going to use these days, pop-ins, just because I like it so much. So looking at it now, this is what we have. That's it. All right. So now what I want to do is set up some CSS properties. We have four different colors really here. We have this, uh, this red, this yellow, this kind of like very light green, and then this white here. Um, and so what we want to do is set those up. Um, we'll put these in the root. And what we're going to do is uh, color one is going to be RGB 255, 79, and 79. Now, I chose this color because I know exactly um, what I did is I got this extension today right here. It's the color pick eyedropper. So you click on it, and then we can just get color pick like right there and it gives you the color codes and the RGB values. So that's how I got that. So I did that for each one of these, um, and I already have them saved. Now for each one of these, uh, for each color one, or for each, each of the four colors, I'm also gonna have an alpha version of that. There's probably a better way to do this, but here's what, let me just show you what I'm doing here. We're gonna have color one alpha. All we're doing is adding the A for alpha. So you, there's an RGB function for colors and also RGB A. Same thing, except the A is alpha. We can specify opacity at the end. Um, and I'm just gonna choose zero at the very end. So we're just creating a, a, a property that makes this um, completely transparent uh, using the same color here. And you'll see why that comes into play. Actually, I'll just tell you now. Uh, you'll see it comes into play though. Um, notice if we, we zoom up here, um, some of these like white areas, actually I apply it on this one too. I'm gonna create a gradient that goes from that color one alpha to the white and then back down to create kind of like gradient borders, so to speak. All right, so we need to do that for the other four. I already have those all worked out here. I'm gonna paste them right there. So that's just all those colors, same exact thing happening. All right, great. Now at this point, let's go ahead and take our button container, which if we refer back to the HTML, it's right here. It's the parent element of all of our buttons here. So what we'll do, and you know what? It will make sense. I'm gonna hit Control B here for a second. We're gonna move things around just so we can start to see what's happening with our code. I have a bunch of random stuff on my desktop, very unprofessional. Um, there it is right here. So we're gonna just take this guy right there, or girl, I don't know, my, bri my, my browser, I don't know, it might be a girl, I don't know. Um, right here, okay, so great. Let's take our BTN container, and we're gonna display a grid, because we have like 14, so grid, template, columns, repeat, 14, one fractional unit, they're all gonna be equal. All right, can't, still can't see anything, right? Um, just so we can start to see something, uh, we're not done with the properties yet. Let's put in um, our button and just let's just do background um, gray for now. This is not what we're gonna be using. Uh, we'll do height like 40 pixels and then um, a padding of like 1.5 M units. I wanna start to be able to see these things, okay? All right, so continuing up here, we're gonna gap 1M just to give ourselves some white space. All right, so we can start to see it now. Um, and that's gonna be all for now. We're gonna come back and add a couple more properties later once we start working on other things. Okay. All right, so that's our button. Um, let's work in on a little bit more on the buttons themselves. So um, what we're gonna do is, let's do cursor pointer first of all, because they're buttons and you want them to be able to you know, behave like that. Um, so what we wanna do now is we're going to put in a border width of one pixels. So, you know, there's there's the overall border property which allows you to specify a bunch of other of the sub properties all in one property. Uh, but we're gonna do do it this way and you'll see why. So we're gonna put a border width of one pixels, a border sty uh, style of solid, all right? And of course we don't see anything. Well, we do see something because by default it will make it white. So we can see we have borders on them now. You can see if I zoom up especially. All right, so 
at this point, what we want to do is, I uh, we want to try to create this in such a way that it's it's not verbose. You know, we want we we want as little code as possible. So we know that reverting back to our little graphic. Let's get this. Well, let's just leave it there. We have four different colors. All right, so we have to work with this. And the fact that the, there is a radial sort of gradient occurring. Notice how it's kind of like lighter here and it fades out. So. We don't want to replicate our code uh, a bunch of times, so we're going to make use of some mix-ins and stuff like this. So what we'll do is we're going to target this, uh, the first four, nth child, one. So that selects this one right here. And then what we want to do then is just replicate this three times and open that up. So four, three, and then two. All right, so inside of here, what we can say now is background like red. And there we go, we see all of them. Let's move this over a little bit more. All right, but we don't want that because that looks like hell. <laughs> all right, so what we can do now is we can start to uh, work with these, to, uh, within this these selectors here, this, this uh, rule set rather, to get all of the stuff that's happening on these buttons. And there's a lot happening here, as you can see. There's there's like um, several different borders and streaks and stuff like that. Um, the problem with that, if we do it all within here, that means we're gonna have to replicate this for the nth child, five, six, seven, eight. And then that'll be another like replicating it. So what we wanna do is we wanna work in a mix in here. All right, so we're gonna, create, uh, we're going to reference the mix-in first. Uh, it's not created yet, but so it won't work. What, the way we do that, we, hit, we put at include, and then we put the mix-in name that we'll later define. Uh, we'll just call it button style. All right, and we're also going to pass in two different uh, parameters, uh, which are going to be um, variables. Color one, and we'll also pass in color one alpha. So you'll see how these take, uh, the, the, how these come into play in a second. So let's go ahead and create that actual mix-in. So we can just create it, um, I'll create it up here underneath our properties. Mix-in, button style, and we have to specify those uh, parameters. So we'll call this one color, and then color alpha. All right, so it's like a function, basically. So background, this is where we're gonna put, all, by the way, all of our properties. So we know the background. The first thing we wanna take a look at is here. So the background is this color, right? So we're gonna give it a flat color of that background first, but there's also a radial gradient occurring here. And it's basically a circle-based radial gradient. So what we do is background is gonna be the color that's passed in, and then we're gonna put radial and then gradient. It's a function, and it's going to be a circle, and we're gonna put in RGBA, 255, 255, 255.3, because remember, if we, if we left that at one, it's gonna be white in the center. And then we're going to put, uh, after the, that closing parenthesis, 0%, and adjusting this percentage value will change like how big or small that is. Uh, and then we're gonna put in uh, our actual color property. And we're just gonna put about 70% here. All right, so now if we save this, look what we have. Oh, and by the way, why are these like square? Um, did I mean 80 pixels here? Yeah, I did. All right, so if we move this out. So we could see now that uh, it's looking pretty close to this aesthetic here. In fact, if I try to get them both in view, kind of hard, looking pretty solid. Okay, so now let's go ahead and focus on some of these these outer part portions, which uh, really affected a lot. So, or really make the the the, the appearance uh, that they're actual physical buttons. All right, so we're working up here still. And what we can use here um, is 
we're gonna use a box shadow property. And box shadow allows you to do multiple properties that are comma, comma separated, so you have multiple shadows essentially. So box shadow, and, and it can also be either on the outside or inset, which means on the inside. All right, so let's put uh, the first one right here, inset. And what we wanna do is, out, instead of these, these graphics right here, the, I mean the white line, we want to create just the solid color. I uh, because if you look over here, you'll see that this radial sort of gradient that's occurring doesn't it, it doesn't affect the outer portions. So we just want an inner uh, inset box shadow. I think of it like a, as an inner border essentially. So 9 pixels, 9 pixels. So this is on x and y. And then zero pixels, that's for the blur amount, like how much it's blurred, we're not gonna have any. Um, I, negative seven pixels here, I forget the fourth value. Uh, don't worry, we'll check it out in a second. And then we're gonna put in our color. All right, so if we save this. Um, temporarily, let me see here, I want to get rid of our border Actually, let me just comment those out. Okay, now we can see this a little bit better. If I zoom up a lot, why can't I see it? Ah, it's not letting me go over that way. How annoying. Well, we could see if you look right here on this edge, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up. Actually, what we can do to make it really show up is boost this up to like one. Now you can kind of see how there's a uh, inset shadow right here on this edge, and it's essentially uh, pushed in by this nine pixel value right here. Um, let's continue on and add another inset shadow. Now, by the way, if you're kind of confused about all these and you'd rather work in with a like a like a, a GUI of sorts, um, CSX box shadow generator. There's a bunch of them. You know what? I found they all have like pretty ugly user interfaces, but this one's the one I use. It works pretty well. When you click add new, it'll just add another uh, one for you to work with and it comma sets or separates the value. So you can use this. So the blur, oh, I was wrong. The blur is the fourth value and I, no, the spreads the uh, fourth value and this blur is, yeah, I was right, is the third value. So this is called the spread. And you can play with those at your own leisure. Um, and so let's go put a comma here. We're gonna do another one. I, this one, I, yeah, this one is going to be a highlight like around here. It's not gonna be perfect like this or look exactly the same, but it's gonna look very close. So we're gonna inset this one as well. And this time we're coming up from the opposite end. So we're gonna put negative values here. Eight pixels, negative, eight pixels, zero, and then negative seven pixels for the spread, RGBA, 255, 255, 255, and 0 0.3. Uh, we'll just leave it at one for now, just so we can see it. All right, so that's what this does. All right, and just for the fun of it, I kind of wanted to add uh, shadows coming off there. It, this is a pretty dark background, so temporarily, just so we can see what's happening here, let's boost it up. Um, this is really ugly, I know, but but just just so we can see what's happening here. Um, we're gonna add um, ones that are box shadows that are on the outside, so we don't specify the inset keyword. We specify just our our our, our values. So negative two on the x, uh, negative two on the y, two pixels on the blur, zero on the spread, and then it'll be RGBA zero 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 point two for the alpha. Let's try that. So you can see it right here. So let's assume the light source is coming from up here, and then. We'll do another one uh, that's even further out. So negative 10 pixels, negative 10 pixels, seven pixels, blur, so a bigger blur, bigger spread, RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1. Of course, you could play around with the value, these values. So you can see it just kind of pushes it off further up there. So let's go back to the um, right here. It was somewhere like right around here, I think. So you can just barely notice it, and hardly at all, actually. Yeah, but just to show you how it's done, that is how it's done. Um, now let's also try to add um, 
the there's a, a couple in the original there's these things coming down so what we're going to do is try to recreate this right here on this side and this side all right so to do that we're going to take i uh, the border image property and what am i opening that up like i'm not in javascript right now um we're going to go in linear gradient and we're going to say to bottom all right so this is a direction we're going to put in color alpha this is where the alpha property comes in uh, because we're going to have a three-step gradient on the border so it goes from transparent to white to transparent all right so then for the next one this is the middle rgba 255 255 255 and one and then color alpha once again and then we after this put one in 100 percent and we have to bring back these two properties and save it oh that is horrendous oh i'm an idiot there's not supposed to be a comma here and this looks yellow because i didn't put a 255 there and there we go so now that's looking pretty you know fairly accurate i uh, right here as we can see definitely not too shabby in terms of the overall appearance this is what they lo it looks like at actual 100 percent so looking pretty good i like that although this it should not be one there this should i think this was 0.3 there we go and I think that looks like a pretty decent representation. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. So now what we can do is we can take these other ones like this. I'll just repeat this once and then just paste the other ones. And this is gonna be five, six, seven, and eight. This is gonna be color two, color two, and it's all just gonna work like that. So now I'm gonna copy and paste the rest of the other two rule sets from off screen and there we go look at that awesome all right so now how would we do the the this portion right here um these lines all right so let's see how we can do that this is already a long tutorial uh, so these things take time uh it's nuts um, so what we want to do now is we're going to target um, Let me make sure I get this okay, so we're going to target the button container right here and we're going to use the pseudo element of before on, on it so I think we have to come out just right here before the closing because we're on button container so we're going to say and before and then we're going to put padding of three M units. And then we're also going to put a background of, uh, let's see here. I think it's gonna be the same, wait, no, 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 I'm an idiot. I'm looking at the wrong rule set. <laughs> we're gonna put in content empty. We're gonna put position absolute. So that means this needs to be position relative and also just to make sure I don't have anything else here. We need to give ourselves space on the top up here. So we're gonna put padding top. So that's I uh, three M units. We need to give ourselves space to put those lines. That's what that is. So then um, what we'll do is, and re by the way, I've explained this many times. I might as well do it again. Um, we put content empty and position absolute on this pseudo element, which is a very common pattern. And then on its parent, um, you take position relative. So that way, when we put, we try to position this thing, it's going to be positioned in relation to that element as opposed to this, the top of the browser, the right or bottom of the browser. All right. Width is going to be 100% because these are the lines we're talking about. Height will be 40 pixels. And this top is going to be zero, left zero. And then the way we create these uh, re those lines, we can use the background property, not border box, and then we can use multiple, um, we can use what's called the repeating linear gradient. All right, so all we have to do is put RGBA, 255, 255, 255, 255 
try to say that fast 10 times. We start at 0%, and then we replicate this with Shift Alt down, and then we keep it to 10%. So that's gonna be the first line. Now if we save it, it's just gonna repeat this all the way through. But we don't want that. What we want is RGBA, we're gonna take the background, I think it's like 34, 34, 34, and that's gonna start at 10%, and then it's gonna to go to 20%. And then what we'll do is save it. Oops, semicolon. Oh no, screwed something up. Let's see here, repeating linear gradient. I'm screwing something up majorly. All right, what's it say? Overload function, given wrong number of arguments. All right, RGBA. I'm looking at my reference code because the reference code does work. You know what I'll do? I'll just paste in the reference code. And it works. What changed? Something in there changed, but I'm not spotting it. Oh, we don't want that. Wow. Don't you just love when things work and you don't know why? No, I don't. Well, anyhow, look at this code. That's what you want. I am really tired right now. All right, and this is basically how you achieve that effect. Um, of course, I think there's like one too many, so you can play with these values and stuff uh, until you get four, because I think there was four in the original. Right, uh, where's the original? Yeah, up here. But yeah, overall pretty close. Um, how do we do the actual uh, value, or the little labels underneath them? We could do that with the HTML as well. I'm not gonna do all like the crazy ones, but I'll just do these to show you how that's done. So what we can do is we wanna take our button itself and use the pseudo element of before. And we're gonna position absolute. And we're gonna width 100%. And again, this is gonna mean this has to be position relative. All right. And we're going to put text align center. Bottom is going to be negative two M units. Left will be zero and color will be gray. Then what we do is we can take and nth child one before. So we're selecting each one of these individually, but only the pseudo elements, as you can see. And then we can say content, not empty, but we can just give it the label like NR or whatever. Oh, and it, of course, doesn't work because I didn't put a colon there. And there it is. Look at that. So then you just uh, replicate that a million times. And this is what you get. Look at that. So I know there was a lot to digest here, um, but this is basically, you know, a lot of the techniques um, using multiple property values that are comma separated by the box shadow property, the repeat, repeating linear gradient, and there's, there's several others, the box, uh, like I said, the box shadow already. Um, and, and yeah, it'll be fun to, to kind of get into more of this because it really is helpful. Um, it, 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 you can, it can actually help you, even though these aren't like really practical things, the, the just the process of, of doing it and knowing it will be certainly helpful in certain cases in the future when you're working on a serious project. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.